So I'd like to look at sort of typical sort of dendrite or diffuser models, particularly when I'm dealing with sort of the change in na neighboring voltages being very, fairly small. So when I think about a you know, dendrite model, we can talk about this as a set of transistors, <clears throat> both horizontal and vertical sort of uh, coupling through these transistors. Now, this is, is a diffuser line. Typically, we would end up having floating gates in here. So that way we can set things based on sort of different um, diameters and so forth. Uh, and so a lot of things certainly come out of those very significant dynamics. But what we want to look at now is actually sort of look at very, a very particular special case that's typically seen in a lot of sort of neuroscience cases, but also a lot of resistive network cases, is the case of saying, well, imagine if all of these resistance to ground are equal, all of these conductances between the nodes are equal, or at least meant to be relatively equal. What you end up expecting out of that is you're going to get diffusion or sort of a parabolic PDE, effectively a heat equation, um, and then you want to take, and, would, and we want to just kind of look at what would that measurement be. Say, let's say I put in a stimulation on this side, say a constant time stimulation, so I'm looking at a steady state solution, although I want to look at how this changes with space, and think about that structure. Now, for those who are curious how you get the transistors to look, you know, the resistive element, you can think about them as being in an ohmic regime, uh, because you can't actually talk about a subthreshold device when the, the voltages are fairly small, that effectively I can get an ohmic type behavior. And if I do, using that kind of linearization technique, I would imagine even with like multiple input currents that I would get an interesting resistive network. Quite useful. So if I had a network like this, and I assume that my R's and my G's were all equal, I actually would get this um, equation uh, in both in space and sort of for space and time, assuming I also have a capacitance from each of these nodes to a fixed potential. And, you know, EK we're kind of thinking about as kind of our ground, as kind of a biological ground, and we'll just kind of, we're kind of letting that just kind of get washed out of the equation. For those who are familiar, this does look like a heat equation or a diffusion type of approach. Not terribly surprising there, but here's the thing, you know, the steady state, so I'm not worrying about the time partial. What ends up getting is I end up having a steady state solution here of just for space. And if I look at the structure, say for a constant input at a particular tap, say at x equals zero, very particular initial condition, not and assuming an infinite boundary condition on the other side, what I end up getting is something that, in fact, infinite boundary conditions on plus and minus, what I would get is actually this equation where I get some initial condition and it should be exponent and it should change exponentially with position over the space constant. And you might say, well, okay, that's interesting. The space constant, by the way, will definitely be a function of what are these voltages here. And so you might imagine I could do this for different kinds of structures. So a couple things that we looked at this was saying, well, what would what would a typical simulink model look like for this differential equation? as well as what were measured values actually done for this. And we're kind of looking at tab 0 to about 9. And what you end up seeing, you know, first is that often you're getting exponential drops through most of the middle spot. There's a little bit of interesting edge conditions on the boundary conditions. But you're noticing that actually not only do I get pretty good agreement between the model and the measured data, um, but I also can tune it. I have a very different space constant here for this first one, which is actually quite quite uh, quite small effectively, versus this one here, uh, the pink, this sort of magenta one, where it's definitely the space constant is certainly less than one tap. And again, there's an approximation as I build this over taps, uh, because after all, it's still you know it's still not quite continuous space, but it kind of is and it kind of isn't, and that's a much more complex conversation. But the neat part is that in all of these cases, you get very, very fair agreement to this. And um, this is one of many different kind of cases where people could show you can get very good agreement in these kinds of spaces.